Hi, I'm James Moody. I'm the team lead of the reports component in Rational Team Concert. Now, one request we see frequently from users who are writing reports is for the ability to include the results of a work item query in a report. After all, once you've written a work item query, you've really already done the hard work of data collection for a report. So you should be able to leverage that work rather than repeating it. So in Team Concert 2.0, you can do this. And today I'm going to demonstrate how you can write a report on a work item query quickly and easily. So to begin with, I've loaded the Team Concert 2.0 client. Uh, you can see here I'm connected to a repository. This is actually our production server on jazz.net. I'm going to use this a little bit later to actually deploy and view this report template. I've also preloaded uh, BERT, which we're going to use as our report editor, and all of its prerequisites. So to, let's get started here. I'm going to create a new project called Reports. And then I'm going to create a new report within that project. And we will call that Work Item Query. We'll click Finish, and this will open the report in the BERT editor. So the first thing that we're going to need in this report is a parameter. We're going to pass into the report uh, the ID of the work item query that we'd like to execute. So we'll call this query UUID. Now we'll talk about nicer ways to do this later. No one really wants to use raw item IDs, uh, but we'll improve this a little bit later. Now I'm going to need a new data source. We're going to make a jazz data source and we're going to call it work items data source. Now I'm going to specify a repository and a project area as well as the work item snapshot. Now note that although you do need to specify a repository and a project area, these are really design time settings. I'm not restricted to deploying this report only to the repository and the project area that I've selected. But we do need to have this information at design time so it can preview result, introspect on the snapshots and things like that. So that's why we have to specify that. Next we're going to create a data set on that data source. And we'll call this query data set. Now the table, this is a new table in 2.0, is called work item query results. Now note this isn't really a table in the data warehouse. This is actually a view on the live data in the repository. I'm going to select the work item ID and the summary, and I'm going to pass in the item ID of the query. And you might remember that's actually the parameter that we selected on the report. So when I get into this editor here, I can actually go and bind the report parameter to the data set parameter. So that value will get passed right through. So now we're done with the data set. Now BERT has this really neat shortcut where you can drag a data set directly onto the canvas and it creates a table with one column in the table for every column in the data set and you'll end up with one row in this table for every row that the data set returned. And that's basically what I wanted to show in this report anyway. So that's great. So now I'm going to save this that's it, we're basically done writing the report. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to switch over to the Team Artifacts view, and I'm going to create a new report template. I'm going to call it Work Item Query. I'm going to select a team area to associate it with. Note that this doesn't mean that I'm necessarily sharing it with that team area. As a matter of fact, in this case, you can see this is actually private. But I do need to associate it with the team area so that it knows which process rules to follow when dealing with operations on that report. I'm going to browse for the file. I'm going to deselect supports data caching. The supports data caching is really there for uh, reports that take a long time to render and are working on historical data that isn't updated frequently. In this case, we're dealing with live data and we actually want the uh, work item created to get executed every time we view the report. So I don't want to actually cache the results of the report. If I had some auxiliary files, such as properties files where I externalized uh, my uh, strings or uh, any auxiliary images or uh, BERT libraries or templates, I would include them here, but I don't today. So now we'll say OK. Now we'll go and find that report template in the list. 
there it is, work item query. So I'm actually just going to create a report from that template and I'll put it in the My Reports folder. So that's it. So I'm basically ready now to view this report. I'm going to open it. Right, so I had a parameter query UUID. So now I need the ID of a query. Now as it so happens, I have a web browser here where I was actually viewing a query and I'm going to cheat a little bit and actually steal the UUID from the URL. I'll just paste it in here, run the report, and there we go. We get all the results of the work item query. You could compare this with the results in the browser and you would see that they're the same. Now, as we mentioned, using this item ID for the query isn't nice, so as a further exercise, one could modify this report so that it takes the name of a query and then converts that into the item ID automatically. Another approach you could use is to bind the parameter to the query descriptor item type, so you can actually choose from a list of queries. So I'll post this report on our wiki so you can download it and try it for yourself. Thanks so much for watching.